In this video, I will talk about Test Case Studio. It is a tool that helps with test cases. Sometimes in our community, we swap the terminology between test case and test script. It's okay because both involve steps. A test case represents the manual functional steps for testing software, while a test script represents the automation steps for testing software. For the agenda, I will start by installing Test Case Studio, then demo Test Case Studio. After the demo, I will download data from Test Case Studio. Now, let's begin with the installation. With the installation, the first step we are going to do is search for Test Case Studio. The description shows that Test Case Studio is a free browser recorder plugin to record the user actions performed on a web application. I'm going to click the link, and on this page, we're going to hover products. And the menu shows Test Case Studio and Test Case Studio Pro. In addition, we see the other products from Selectors Hub. Selectors Hub, Selectors Hub Pro, Test Case Hub, and we also have ads for Selectors Hub. At the bottom, we see practice page that we will use for our demonstration. Test Case Studio is the free version, while the Test Case Studio product is the premium version. We're going to look at three steps to complete the process. Those steps start with step one, add Test Case Studio to your browser. The browsers are Chrome, Firefox, Edge, Opera, Brave, Safari, Chromium, and Tor. Second step is to pin the extension. The third step is to click the logo in the browser toolbar. Our steps will be recorded automatically after clicking the logo. I will install for Chrome. Click Add to Chrome. At this point, we click Add Extension. Another tab opens up for us to subscribe to Selectors Hub YouTube channel. On the middle tab, we see Test Case Studio has been installed. Now we are finished installing Test Case Studio. Next, I am going to demo Test Case Studio. Let's go back to the original tab for my extension. I'm gonna click the extensions. Next is to pin the extension for Test Case Studio. I will use this practice page within the products menu for this demonstration. To record our steps, we must click Test Case Studio in the top right corner. Minimize the window and start by entering an email, rex.jones at testforsuccess.org. Then the password, test1234. And the company is test, ABC123. Now that we have entered the email, password, and company, next is the names. We see first name and last name are disabled. So we must click the edit icon. First name becomes enabled, but last name remains disabled. First name is Rex. Click last name, but nothing happens. I can right click last name and nothing happens. I can double click the edit icon and we still cannot enter last name. That is a bug. So let's stop the recording part and let's get into the bug report. For example, in some organizations, the QA team must write each step for the bug report. That is time consuming, but with Test Case Studio, each step has been automatically recorded for us. Click the 
test case studio icon in the taskbar and we see all of the steps and they are detailed with good information. For example, step one has open website. In addition to the steps, we see step number, data, expect the result, XPath, and CSS selector. The last part we see is screenshots. Step number start at step one all the way to step 10. The data is accurate by showing the website URL, email address, company name, and first name. It's good that password is encrypted because we may not want to show the password. We can also make updates to the step, data, and any of these roles that contain information. Although it is good that password is encrypted, let's update password to test1234. Expect the results are blank because that information will be different from application to application and person to person. Therefore, we provide the expected results if we want to add an expected result. XPath and CSS selector are automatically generated by Test Case Studio. The screenshots are super valuable because we have an opportunity to see the bug. Let's click on the screenshot for number nine or number eight. Click on enter last name because that's where the bug is located. And we see this here is number nine, where I right click on enter last name. That's where the bug is located because we see enter last name is highlighted red. That's the bug. Look how the screenshot title is descriptive. It is not generic like most screenshots that are used whenever we're going to upload it to a bug report. So I like that part because the screenshot has a descriptive name. I'm going to close the screenshot and we see that the next steps are extra after the bug. So we can remove them from the report because we don't really need them. In the far right corner is a way to add steps and re delete steps. So let's delete the extra steps that we do not need for this report. So after clicking on enter last name, I will remove right click on enter last name and also remove the last step which click on the edit icon if we wanted to we can also add a step so let's add a step just to show you the demo I'm going to click the plus icon for number eight then write enter last name for the step and expect the result how about I show you that by writing expect last name to be entered successfully but last name box is disabled and I'm going to also increase this column for expect the result so we can see the complete information if we choose to copy all of the steps for the bug report, then we can click the copy icon. And when I hover, the tooltip shows click to copy all the test steps. It's the same for the other columns except for screenshot and the step number. For screenshots, we are allowed to turn the feature on or off. However, most reports, most reports prefer a screenshot, but to turn it on or off, we click this icon that's green and we see it turns off and we can turn it back on. We can copy the data. Also, expect the results, XPath and CSS selector if you want to. Let's copy XPath. Then go to my IntelliJ IDE. Create a test by writing public void. How about the name of the method is demo test case studio. Then I'm gonna paste the information for the step. 
And this is the information for the XPath. We see all of the values from XPath. That's cool. Let's go back to the tool. Do you see this icon for turning on the driver command? We can cut it on or cut it off. But when I cut it on, then the XPath and CSS selectors display more information that is prefixed with driver dot find element by XPath and by CSS selector. Now, when it comes to automation, we always find an element before performing an action on the element. Therefore, this feature supplies a way for us to find the element. We can also customize the value. If I end up clicking <clears throat> this part, we see customized value where we can write our own relevant value if we want to, if we want to customize the value. Now, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to copy the CSS selector value which has the driver dot find element. Go back to my IDE, and this time I'm going to paste, and we see the information has driver dot find element by CSS selector. To complete this automation test script, I can write send keys, which is a method for typing data. Even for the next step for password, I can write send keys and the data we wrote was test one, two, three, four. That helps if we want to use this information that already have the X path and CSS selected values. Let's go back to the test case studio. And there are more icons at the top, four icons in the top left corner. We can stop and also start the recording. The next icon helps set the attributes for XPath and CSS selector. We see text, ID, class, name, and placeholder. These attributes determine how the elements are located in a DOM. The third icon allows us to clear all of the recorded steps from one through nine. The last icon, add columns and remove columns. We can decide to remove XPath if we want to. Remove XPath and CSS selector. However, for this demo, let's keep one of the from, how about XPath? Let's keep XPath. And that's it for the demo of Test Case Studio. Next, let me show you how to download data from Test Case Studio. And by downloading data, I must bring back up the report. And all we need to do is to click this Test Case icon or the button. In my Downloads folder, we see that all of the screenshots and steps have been downloaded. The screenshots are located in a zip file. And if I open the zip file, we see how the screenshots are descriptive with the test case name. For example, number eight shows click on enter last name. There was not a screenshot for number nine because I manually added that step. Let's open up number eight. And it shows the input box. No, it shows that you know what, I mistakenly deleted the one that had last name highlighted red, but it still shows how whenever a step is performed or has some kind of action, it is highlighted red. This one is when I click the last name. So let me go back and we're gonna do one more thing because I want you to see the CSV file that has these steps. I'm going to increase steps, data, expect the result, and the command that shows the X 
X-Pads. And let me make this bigger so I can make sure that you can see when I increase the columns. We see step, data, expect the result, and command. Yes, all of this information is here. Once we have this info, we can upload it to our test case management tool like Jira or ALM. There is one more feature I want to show you. Notice in my downloads folder, the name is Selectors Hub, then it shows the date. We can save and download the files with a customized name. At the top, the placeholder says, set the test case name here. Let's write example test case. Then click the test case button. This time when I go to my downloads folder, we see the customized name shows example test case for the zip file and the CSS file. That's it for Test Case Studio. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.